Okay, I think we are ready to begin. So hello everyone. My name is Nadine and I'm from the Kibo RPC Secretariat and I will be guiding this session about the fifth Kibo RPC. So just for your information, for those who have been assisting to the first session in March, this session will have the same flow as the first one, but with more details and updates about the competition. So please stay attentive. Um, yeah, so thank you for attending this guidance session and let's begin. OK, so here is today's agenda. We will start with an overview of the Kibo RPC. So the keyboard robot, the Kibo robot programming challenge. Um, we will also explain a program creation, the preliminary rounds, the final round conducted on the International Space Station. And at the end of this guidance session, we will have a Q&A session. So please feel free to use the chat as needed. Okay, now we will start with the Kibo RPC overview. So the Kibo Robot Programming Challenge or Kibo RPC is a robot programming competition for students in which students compete to complete a given mission using a, a robot on the International Space Station or ISS. Um, this, um, yeah, so the robot will be uh, conducted with the action of students uh, that have programmed. So this program is open to graduate students and undergraduate students from around the world with a focus on the Asia Pacific region. Um, all the, det the details will be written in the, the rule book and in the manual of programming. So please read those uh, two um, guidebooks that we will be given if you are registered to the Kibo RPC competition. So the Kibo RPC aims to increase your skills, your expertise, and your aspiration in science, in technology, and in mathematics. Uh, with this competition, you will understand the differences among a, simula a simulated environment and the real environment of the ISS. And you will also learn about the position and the attitude estimation of the space robot, as well as the error correction. So a lot of new skills. Overall, we hope that this competition will be a great learning uh, experience for you all. So I want to take a moment to explain what is the International Space Station, or the ISS, in which the final round will take place. So it is a huge facility, as you can see on the screen, who is, uh, which is located um, 400 kilometers above the ground in orbit and in where uh, art astronauts can implement uh, a lot of different uh, diverse experiments. So to create the ISS, different elements that you can see on the screen where uh, were assembled and installed together. That's what we call module. So uh, the final round will be conducted in the Japanese module, who, whose name is Kibo. So the Kibo module, which is an experiment laboratory. You can see here, and it's based here on the ISS. So um, to help astronauts with their life in space, you can find robots on the ISS. So there is two types of free-flying free robots, so they fly by themselves, that are on board the ISS. First, you have Intball. Oh, sorry, I have a miss, but it's Intball, not Ball Ball. <laughs> so Intball, um, um, who is used by the crew for routine video footage of the ISS. So basically taking videos of the ISS. And secondly, you have here the Astro B, which is a NASA robot that can help astronauts with a lot of daily tasks. And on our Kibo RPC challenge, we will be using Astro B. 
Um, so here is the overview of the previous uh, competition. So last year competition, uh, which was the fourth Kibo RPC event. Um, so in total, we had 421 teams from 12 countries, totaling, uh, uh, totaling 1,685 students that has participated to, to the event and to the competition. The winning team of each country had the opportunity to compete with their robot program on the ISS. So each country has a winning team, and this team is going to the final round, which is the event that you can see here on the screen. Since last year, we've established a United Nation Office Outer Space Affairs, or UN OOSA slot. And this slot is leading to the participation for more countries or more region than ever before, because it was before just uh, for Asian countries. So um, among the finalists of the fifth tournament, those interested in participating to the events locally were uh, at the Tsukuba Space Center in Tsukuba, who is near from Tokyo, Japan. You can see the picture here. According to the ranking of the preliminary round, the students' programs were executed in turn during the final round, and then awards were uh, attributed according to the results. Um, last year, the team from Taiwan won the fourth tournament, and uh, as they were present at the event, they were directly awarded uh, their certificates by the astronaut Wakata that you can see here. Um, so following the award ceremony, a networking event was held, allowing students to engage in dialogue with astronauts. So it's a huge opportunity, I think, and we plan to hold a similar event at this year's competition. So we hope that you are looking forward to it. OK. Now we will see the details about the fifth Kibo RPC. I would like to tell you the game story for this year first. So the game story is as follows. The astronaut on the ISS is preparing experiments which will be conducted for the ASEAN Stride Zero G event. Um, but some of the tools and the manuals necessary for the experiment are missing. Your mission is to find the missing item with Astro B, using Astro B. And you can see on the, the screen the specs, the specification of the Astro B with all the function that has the robot. Um, I will now explain what will be your mission concretely. So for those who were at the first session, we updated the image on the different item that you can see here. So before it was different. Um, and this is the image that you will have during the competition. So it's really important to remember. Uh, we also added details that were that we are going to tell you about later during the session. So um, especially about image recognition, recognition, which is the key of the competition the competition, so please be attentive. OK, so first, you can see um, the Kibo module from the top view on the screen. So Astrobe start from the dock station here, and you have to move the robot through the different zone of the Kibo module and to identify different image on different locations. So he, you, can, you have to move the robots around the module. You have four areas to inspect in which you will have different image. It is necessary to patrol the areas while avoiding the off-limits areas that we called keep out zone. You can see it on the screen on pink here. There are several keep out zones. Um, if you want to know a little bit more about the keep out zones, it's all on the programming, uh, not the programming, the rule book. Um, so it is important to note that you will have to make Astro B memorize the placements and the position of the object and the number of the object that you encounter. This is the basic rule of the, of the game. 
when your patrol is over, you have to report what you saw to the astronaut, which will be here. Um, then the astronaut will have an image uh, that he, it will, um, they will show you. And you have to process the image with Astrobee and with your program to see what he's looking for. So you're scanning the image that he, she showed you. Then you go back to where the image was and you take a picture of it, as you can see on the screen. OK, so then when the, sign the signal, signal lights, lights up, to show the astronaut the location of the tool, the mission is complete and you have to report the mission completion to the astronaut. So you have to please note that the Astrobee signal lights, uh, as you can see here, uh, illuminates in accordance uh, with the report when the mission is declared complete, but just for the final round on the ISS. Also, please note that the time limit is five minutes for the mission, including the mission completion report. So, yeah, you have to do all your mission uh, within five minutes. So, I think that's all for the game instruction. Now, here is the list of the different possible lost items that you could find during the game. Um, you have a captain tape a top, a screwdriver, you have goggles, also a pipette, wrench, a thermometer, a hammer, a beer, and a watch, which is the telling 10 item, 10 different pattern of items that you can find. You can find all those templates, templates on the keyboard RPC uh, website in the download tab right here. Now I would like to explain about the difficulty of um, level of image. Um, there are four levels of difficulty for the image of the lost items. So the level of difficulty depends on the difficulty you will have for image recognition. So the higher is the level here, and the more difficult it will be to recognize the image that you will see and to recognize it accurately, especially. For example, the level one is uh, an image that will be really easy to recognize for Astro B, but with a low score point, like here. Uh, while for the level four, it will be much more difficult, but will, all you, uh, will allow you to earn a higher score point here. Um, you have to note uh, also that the level one corresponds to the template image of the item that you saw on the previous uh, slide. And this is this uh, kind of image that the astronaut will ask you to search as a target item. They will show you this image of the of the level one image. Also note that the ranking the ranking difficulty can be changed. OK, um, I would like to explain you the criteria to earn points during the game. This part wasn't uh, in the first session, so if you were to the first session, please be attentive because it's really important. So first, uh, here on this screen, um, as explained before, uh, your point will be given if you successfully detect the image displayed. So you will have to detect correctly the type of item and also the number of items that are displayed. So for example, if you recognize correctly the type of item, but not the quantity of item, uh, as you saw, you can have several same item on an image. So if you see what kind of item it is, but not the right quantity, you have no points. Also, if you su succeed to recognize correctly the image, the scoring will be higher if you if the difficulty of image of recognition the the difficulty of image recognition is higher as told before. So second that you can see here, 
Um, so when you will uh, go to take a picture of the target item that the astronauts ask you to search, you have to be positioned a certain way, a certain way to earn points. So the picture has to be taken on uh, 0 0.9 meter range from the item area and fall within a 30 degree angle. So it's quite precise. If one of those two conditions are not fulfilled, you will not get any point. So be careful. So yeah, this, the perfect um, case is displayed here and you have three cases in which it's not giving any points. So please take care of that. Third, um, so the points that you have to reach to do the mission completion report to the astronauts will be indicated on the floor. And Astrobe has to be on a 0 0.3 meter range from this point to successfully report the mission completion. If not, you will get no points. So you have to be really careful about this range area here, max 0 0.3 meter. And a force depending here. Um, so depending on the remaining time when the complete when you complete your when you are completing your reports to the astronaut, you can get bonus point. If you complete the mission from the start to the end quickly, you may get bonus point. Okay, so now I will now give you a few tips which are really important to succeed the mission. So first, you have to be sure to scan correctly the image so Astrobi can recognize them. Really basic, but really important. Second, you have to think about the optimal route to move toward objects efficiently while avoiding the keep out zone. So an optimal route may lead to a higher score. So try to find the optimal route to be quick. Um, third, you have to anticipate, it the, to, to anticipate the problem that the robot or your program may face. So for example, your program could be stuck on a loop or the image can, could not load, or maybe the mapping of your program could be weak. So you have to really be careful when you do your programming to to improve it to be perfect and to not begin to go into bugs. And um, fourth, the more you train and correct your program, the stronger your program is going to be on the real run. So yeah, basically training your program is really, really uh, advised. Now, uh, I will quickly introduce you the schedule. Um, for now, the important dates that you have to remember are, so first, application here. Uh, it has to be completed by May 27. So please note that this date has been changed. Before it was May 13, but now it's 27, so you have more time to register. Um, also, if you want to join the competition, you have to visit the Kibo RPC website to do your registration. If it's not already the case, we advise you to quickly register to have more time to develop and to train your program before the preliminary round. So um, after registering, the second step is program development. So the program development method will be explained in details uh, a little bit later today. So uh, here, uh, so sorry, here. Um, so the, yeah, so after applying, you will receive a real book and a programming manual that has been published since April 1st. Uh, you will then be able to train your program on a simulator. So here, um, the simulator um, is going to, to be useful to train your program and to improve your program. Um, also, you have to submit your program for the preliminary round by June 20, by June 20 here. So please be careful because all these dates are on Japanese time and not on your local time. So yeah, be careful to to the to the date 
and don't wait until the last time to to send your APKs and to send your programs. For the competition, uh, there will be two rounds. So first, it will be a preliminary round in your country that will be taking place between June 21 to July 7. And the second, uh, the second event is the final round that uh, um, will take place with all the countries that are participating and that will be broadcast from the ISS on the end of the October or maybe start of November. So qualifi qualifying preliminary rounds here and here the final event. So now how to participate? The first step is to fill out your registration form on the Kibo RPC website. So to participate, you have to be a student. You have to have a team between three and eight person, person and leader. Um, so after that, you will receive a registration completion notice by email with the logging ID for the JAXA simulation environment. So please don't forget um, this login and share it only with your team members. Also, don't forget the deadline of the application, who is May 27, really important. If you need to update the information after se se sending the application form, let us know via email indicating your uh, team name. You can make modification to your team information even after the application deadline has passed. So don't worry about that. Okay. Um, now, uh, I will explain a little bit how to set up your computer. So for that, you have to check your PC specification first. A typical PC specification should be good enough for your simulations in the web environment. So once you have confirmed the specification that are written on the screen, you have to install Android Studio. Uh, so please install the software Android Studio. And next, you have to download the additional component. Finally, uh, download the template APK, which can be found on the, in the Downloads tab of the website. The template APK um, is a program area of the Astro B um, that cannot be created by the participants and it has been to be prepared in, a, in, in advance by JAXA. So you have to download this template to, to create your program. Um, so participants are asked to, read, to write uh, their own programs using this template, uh, and the language will be Java. Now, <clears throat> when all the downloads uh, are complete, you can start to develop your program and to try to improve it. Um, if you are new to programming, you don't have to worry because we've published a tutorial, tutorial video um, to explain how to log in into the site and how to create a program. And of course, you also have a programming manual to guide you step by step on your programming journey. So no need to worry, even if you are not used to programming. So now I will explain how to create your program, the process for creating. Um, so basically the process for creating the program is also explained in one of the development tutorial video. So yeah, please take uh, a look for more information. But first, you will you will have to build your your program using Android Studio on the PC that you have set up. When you open the downloaded template APK with Android Studio, you will find a file called your service call, called your service uh, in the lower layer of the app folder. When you open this file, you will see codes on the right. In the area indicated by the red square, so here, there is a line that says, write here your plan. This is where you will have to write your program. 
The program codes available um, and reading methods are described in the program manual. So please, write, uh, please read the programming manual carefully. If you want to add a function that is not in the command list in the programming manual, please add it by yourself or import the library. So next you have to upload the APK you created using your account. So you upload it on the site. You log into JAXA simulation, simulation server using the ID that you received after registration. When you log in, you will see a screen like this. Then if you click on simulation tab, you will see a screen like this one and you can upload your APK or drag it and drop it in the specific area here. So after uploading the APK, um, you can start the simulation to let your program run. So you can see a little bit of the simulation here. Once you upload the APK on the simulation tab, uh, the start button will become active. So you, you have to click on it to run the simulation here before it was not active. And after downloading the APK, it becomes active. So you click on start simulation. Then you will get your results. So here is a screen of the results. When you click on results, you will see um, to this screen and you can see a list of the results of the simulation that you have done. Uh, when you conduct more than 20 simulations, you will need to delete previous simulation results just for information. So up to 20 simulation at the same time. If you want to remove it, you can click on the remove button here. So you can click on the view button on the right side of the simulation result to see the details. So this is an example of a, detail, a detailed result. You can see the game time and the score on this page. So uh, I think it is uh, the time here and the score here. Um, if you want to see the details of the run, you can click on the matching of area and item details step. So here and click here. Um, you can also use the button uh, at the bottom of the screen to view the simulation results movie and, the, and to download the simulation log file. So yeah, here and the log files here and here. So this slide shows the matching of area and item details tab that uh, as you click on it. So you will see several details about the item that Astro B has detected and um, yeah, that has detected during the simulation. You have the level of the item first, and then you have the type of item here and you have the quantity. And here it's written if uh, you manage to uh, recognize it correctly or not. So it can be good or not, not good, but not recognized. And uh, the image that you see on the left are displaying the item detected during the game. So this one is for this one and this one for this one extra. Okay, now uh, you have to analyze the result and give feedbacks to the programs you created to improve it. So you have to repeat this process to create your program for the preliminary round. For more detailed procedure and example of program creation, 
pre please refer to the tutorial video. And if you have questions, you can contact us, uh, contact the Secretariat uh, by email anytime. But please note that depending on the issue that you have, we may uh, answer or not uh, to the question for the sake of the fairness of the event. So yeah, please use this period to really improve your program. I think it's a really the key for the competition and to have the better score. Okay, um, so I will now explain the process of how to manage image recognition with your program. So this part was not included in the first session, so please be attentive. Um, so the image processing is managed by using pattern matching and AI image recognition. First, you have to let Astrobi detect the image by opening the CV TensorFlow light. Um, it will then detect the RAR tags. This is a small square thing that you can see here. Um, so it will detect the RAR tags of the image, and then the image will be detected. Then you will have to correct the quality of the image, which could be distorted. So to strain it, to straighten the image and to be to be it clear, um, you have to click again on the and open the open CV TensorFlow light and use the right code. So you have example below. Now. If you want Astrobi to match the image to the correct item, you have to use pantheon matching. So you have to use um, the template image that you have downloaded uh, with OpenCV TensorFlow, uh, TensorFlow Lite again. Um, so note that the match template function does not resize the image and does not consider the image rotation before execution, because depending on the level, you can have different position and rotated image and different size image. So yeah, you have to, to note that it's really important. So depending on the stressful settings, there is a possibility of detecting the same area of the image multiple times, which can be also a problem. Also, the processing time may increase if the target image size is really large. So yeah, you have also to take this into account. Again, the match template measures similarity by taking into account the blank areas, so the areas with nothing around. Um, so the blank areas of the template image. And yeah, please take this into account also. So to manage this kind of difficulties, you will have to improve your program. For example, you could approach and capture images at the close range, maybe, or uh, limit the range of the pattern matching um, for it to be easier for Astrobi to detect the image. The image. You can also adjust the threshold setting and use AI-based image recognition for accurate reading. So now we will see how the preliminary round will take place. Um, so in the, pre the preliminary round, each country's space agencies will run the APKs, so the programs that you have submitted by the deadline using uh, the simulator. So the teams with the highest average score will access to the final round. So you can submit, as said, your APKs from May 27 to June 20. Submitting your APK uh, will allow you to access to the qualifying, qualifying periods. So 
you really have to be careful about the deadlines. And the preliminary round is scheduled for a period between June 21 to Ju July 27. Again, if it's not already the case, we advise you to quickly register to have more time to develop and to train your program on the simulator before the pre preliminary round. So, um, even though you can create up you can create up to 20 data of the APK um, of the run on the simulator. You can only submit one APK, one run for the preliminary, the preliminary rounds. So each team will have 10 runs of their APKs. Um, the random factors are the same for all the teams and the score is calculated on the average of 10 runs. So the preliminary round is organized by each country. So the organization will be different regarding where you are from. And you have to reach out your country's agency to see um, the details of the event. But for an example, we have this on the screen in Japan. We will hold an event for the preliminary round on June 29. And the event will be broadcast on YouTube. So now I will explain how the final round will take place. Um, the final round is conducted by installing the program to Astro B in orbit on the ISS. So details and, the, and program submission dates uh, will be announced to the finalist at a later date, but the program has, has been to be submitted in advance. So for now we are expecting late July to late August um, uh, sorry, yeah, uh, yes, less, late July to late August for the final round program submission. And the uh, final round on itself, it will be on October or November. So for the final round, you have to take into account a really, really important point. So please be careful. Um, so it's really important to understand that the environment will not be the same as on the simulator, on the simulated environment. So on-orbit environments will need a strong mapping that you will have to prepare when developing your program. So the in-orbit environment is not as constant as a simulated one. It can be easily, you can easily lose your positioning if you don't collect enough image of the keyboard interiors. In other words, the self-positioning estimation is performed by matching the image taken by the, taken by the camera during the flight with uh, the feature points of the maps acquired when collecting image of Kibo module. So you really have to understand that you have to take time to prepare your mapping. But this is just the case for the final round, of course, because it's not simulated, it's on the ISS. So um, the final round on itself, it will be consisting on two events. First, you will have the APK final round, which is scheduled to take place in early October. On this event, the finalist APK will be run on the Astro B, uh, on Astro B, on the ISS. And the finalist can watch the video in real time, but the result will not be an announced that day. Next, you will have the final round event, which is an event where the results of the competition from the APK uh, final round run are watched with the astronauts and the results are announced. So two events. The format of the last event is most likely to be a hybrid format, so online and uh, in uh, Japan. But we will inform you uh, of the details as soon as we decide it. Also, uh, the final round event will be live streamed exclusively for event participants. So, yeah, you even if you don't go to the final um, 
the final run, you you can see um, the events um, broadcasts streamed. And even yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's concludes the explanation of the fifth Kibo Robots Programming Challenge guidance session. Thank you so much for participating. <laughs>